Welcome to the Brass Hand Woodwind Shop. This is the final video in the Building a Slide Trumpet series. Some of the viewers have asked about how to tune the slide trumpet and they're wondering if it was going to be a tunable bell or a tunable lead pipe. And I was not sure, but after working on it, what I've decided I'm going to do is make a tunable lead pipe. The lead pipe that I put inside of the slide has a tight fit and there's no air leakage in there. I soldered a draw knob onto the lead pipe and what that does is helps you to pull it in and out and to twist it. So what you do is you just push it in as far as you need to go to keep it in tune. The fit is tight enough inside of the slide so that it does not leak and also it does not move easily so it's not going to go in and out while you're playing it. It only goes in and out if you twist it and pull it or if you twist it and push it in. And then of course the mouthpiece goes into that. I'm going to solder the bell onto the slide section. There is enough room between the mouthpiece and the bell so that the bell does not get in the way of your face while you're playing it. Now I'm going to solder this together and this is going to be a fairly simple solder joint I think. Uh, sometimes when there are two things that go right together the solder does not go into the crack as good as you'd want it to. So let's see what happens here. Okay. Looks like it's good. And also, I want to make sure that I don't unsolder any of the joints that I already did. The solder joint is done, and I don't think anything bad happened, so that's good. It looks like the solder made it all the way around, and it will not leak there, so I think it's good. Now I'm ready to buff the instrument. I'm going to start with a triple E buffing compound and the thin triple E wheel. If you remember in previous videos, I already buffed with the triple E buffing compound. And the reason I'm doing it again is because there are several solder joints that I need to clean up. The triple E buffing compound has a coarse grit and it will clean up the solder joints very quickly. And as soon as I'm done with that, I'm going to switch over to the red rouge buffing compound. The Red Rouge Buffing Compound will give the instrument the nice shiny finish. A lot of people like watching instruments get buffed because it takes them from an old ugly instrument into a very shiny, pretty instrument. I like watching that too, however it does make a mess. Because of that it's not one of my favorite activities, but I can do it. And I do enjoy watching the results of the Red Rouge Buffing Compound. If you want to watch more about buffing, look in the description below for a link to those videos. Now I'm going to get started buffing with the Triple E Buffing Compound. I'm going to use my buffing motor, which I use for a lot of things, and it works very well for buffing. I'll put the spindle in there, and then the Triple E wheel. And you need safety gloves for this job so that you don't hurt your hands as you're doing this. Okay, put some buffing compound on there to get started. I put a rag on the bench to keep at least most of the dust off of my bench. Now I'm going to clean up the solder joints that I made over the last few weeks. The instrument does not have lacquer on it yet. And lacquer, since the solder does not stick to the lacquer, lacquer actually keeps the solder where you want it. Because this does not have lacquer on it, some of the solder went a little farther away from where it's supposed to be than I had hoped. So I'm going to clean that up right now. It should not take too long to do this because it's a very thin layer of solder. <laughs> That's about all it takes to buff off a thin layer of solder. If the solder were thicker, it would have taken a lot longer, but I cleaned up the solder to a very thin layer so that it will buff off very easily. Now I'm going to finish doing that. I need to be very careful because if I get the crook too far into the wheel, the wheel could grab the slide and throw it to the ground. And I do not want that to happen after working so hard on the slide. So I'm being very careful not to let that happen. Okay, there's a little bit more solder in here. And again, this is where you need to be very careful. I've had this wheel catch on enough things to know that it can happen and it does happen. A lot of times things can break or bend or get another dent in it. It just makes more work when you lose stuff into the buffing wheel. So I think that's good. I buffed off all the solder around the crook and the water key. Now I just have a little bit of solder around the brace right here. Okay, 
that's good. Now on the other section I have a little bit of solder mess too. And again I need to be careful not to lose the instrument to the buffing wheel. Okay, there's a little more solder. Okay, I think I got all the solder. Oh no, there's a little bit more here. Now I got all the solder, so I'm ready to switch over to the Red Rouge buffing wheel. And this is the one that makes a big mess. But before I buff it with the Red Rouge, I need to clean up the Triple E buffing compound. So I'm going to do that with a rag, and you just wipe that off. It's not hard. I cleaned up the residue from the Triple E buffing compound, and I put some corks into the end of the slides, and that will keep the stuff out of the inside of the slide tubes. And now I'm ready to go. I'll put that on there. Get the red buffing compound on there. Now I'm going to polish this up and make it look pretty. That does make it look really nice. So I'm going to finish this up and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. I'm done polishing the hand slide and I'm going to set that off to the side and now I'm going to do the other section. So here it goes. I'm not going to make you watch me buff this whole section so I will turn the camera off and I will show you when it's done. I'm almost done buffing. I just need to do the inside of the bell. I'm going to do that now. I have to be careful at the end of the slide tubes. I don't want those to get stuck in the buffing wheel and then thrown to the ground because that would be pretty bad. That looks good. The next thing to do is take a rag with some solvent on it and clean up the buffing compound residue that is left from the Red Rouge buffing compound. So I'm going to do that over the whole slide. Then when I'm done with that, I can lacquer it, or at least lacquer this portion of it. I'm going to take the hand slide outside and lacquer it. A lot of people like to know what lacquer I use. This is touch-up lacquer. Usually it's not used for lacquering whole instruments, but I do not have lacquer facilities for lacquering whole instruments. So I'm just going to use a touch-up lacquer for this, which will work, but it's not quite as good of a job as it would be if I had the lacquering facilities. And spraying lacquer on this. When you do this, you have to be careful not to get too much on. The tendency is to get too much lacquer on the instrument, and then it kind of rolls down there and it leaves marks. Okay, I think that is good. So I'm going to put this inside and wait for it to dry and do the other section. I'm going to do the same thing to this section. And as soon as that's ready, I'm going to lacquer this one also. I did put the hand slide on here because I do not want to get lacquer on the inner slide tubes. This is a fairly easy lacquer job because there really are not a lot of parts to this. And there are not a lot of uh, cracks and crevices that you need to get into. First coat of lacquer is done. Now I'm going to go have lunch and then I will apply the second coat of lacquer. I'm back, now I'm doing the second coat of lacquer. And that's done the same way as the first one. Other than I don't need to do it quite as fast this time because the, the metal has already been sealed with the lacquer, the first coat of lacquer, so it's not going to get tarnished. After you buff the metal, when you clean it up with the solvent and get it ready to lacquer, 
it does not last very long before the air or the oxygen in the air starts to get at the metal and starts to uh, tarnish it. So you need to get lacquer on it right away. But after you put the first coat of lacquer on, then the oxygen does not get to the metal anymore. So I think I'm done and I'm going to wait for it to dry. While that is drying, I'm going to call my friend and tell him that the slide trumpet is ready and he's going to play it for you. Hi Joe, this is Art and the slide uh, good, how are you? The slide trumpet is ready. Well, it's not quite ready. I still need to put some cork on it, but that's it. And uh, the lacquer is drying right now. The lacquer on the slide trumpet is dried. So now all that's left is putting some corks in the cork barrels and putting the water key on. Water keys can be hard to put on sometimes. Other times they're easy. This spring goes inside of the water key. Usually they don't. Now let's see if this one's going to be one of the easy ones or the hard ones. I think it's going to be easy. And these ones you have to line it up and then hope that the uh, the hinge rod goes through the spring. If it does not, sometimes these take a long time to do. But that one worked okay, so that one's all done. Now I need to put the corks in the cork barrels. This slide trumpet has very small cork barrels, so I do not need much cork for this. Probably about that much. I'm going to cut that. And break that off. Then to soften it up, I take a screwdriver and do that. Now I can bend it without it breaking. So I put it up to there and then cut it and do that with the other one also. Then use the side to push it in. This is exciting. All I need to do is put the lead pipe in there and then it is done. My friend Joe took the slide trumpet home to practice it. He said that he had a hard time playing it with the slide so close together. So what I did is I made this little thing right here. I took part of a trombone wire and then I took another part of a chunk of brass and then I curved the edges and buffed that down. And then I soldered those two together so that it's going to be easy to hold and you can use that to slide it back and forth. And this screws on to the brace that goes in between the two outer slides. He's going to be here shortly with the slide trumpet and I'm going to put that on there and we will see how it works. Here's the part to hold the slide and we put some shrink tube on it so that it wouldn't click when it went back and forth. So this is ready to get played now. This is my friend Joe and he's going to play the slide trumpet for you. I had a lot of fun building this slide trumpet, and I really hope you enjoyed watching it. Now I'm going to introduce you to my next project, which will start next Friday. It's a Reynolds bass trombone with the two valves, and the slide is very smashed up. It has a serious dent in the slide, and you can no longer buy these slide tubes, so I'm going to have to fix what's here. And also, the cork barrel is destroyed, so I'm going to have to fix that. Please subscribe for more band instrument repair videos.